find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. The time is upon us when all must choose which side we are on. We cannot win this fight. I will not hide. Will others fight our battles for us? They are my friends. Will you follow me? Hello, Internet. Today is November 11th, 2014, and this is episode 52 of the Rambling Movie Minute, uh, where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. On today's show, we're going to talk everything from a little bit of Hobbit and uh, movie drafts. Also, um, Matt Damon and Star Wars, possibly. Uh, from Pittsburgh... I am Rambling Mango, also from Pittsburgh, and since I'm in studio, I can see this person. Yeah! Sorg, how's it going? All right, we are in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, on podcast night. Good to see you in person again. Uh, so, uh, awesome, awesome. Are you ready to talk some movies and see what's going on? Definitely. And, and, and fill my movie card for, for, for coming up. Yeah, yeah, I could probably do that. But first, we should definitely say hi to our New York connection. All the way from New York. I was going to say New York, New York, but oh, that's... Poughkeepsie. That, yes. Poughkeepsie. Our New York connection. Yes. Mad Mike! I can't hear you, Mad Mike. Are you still I'm there? I'm sorry, I my uh, hangout just stalled for a second. Yeah, yeah, he's Yeah! Right. <laughs> Movie time, I'm excited. And I still like to think of myself as from New York, New York, so... He's got the attitude. So. I don't know what the attitude for for Poughkeepsie is, but uh, um, there isn't one. There isn't one, <laughs> huh? So I learned, you know, hey, uh, this doesn't apply so much to the show, but Ricky Steamboat apparently from your neck of the woods. Oh yeah, Ricky Steamboat actually once hit on my mom. Oh, that's a story for a different podcast. Anyways, back to you, Malengo. Boom. Um, let's uh, based on the trailer that we saw, and I have not seen it, but from what I can remember. Uh, it was the, the Hobbit last, the final spot for the TV trailer or yes. the final TV trailer spot before December. Is that, no, is that it, it's the final TV trailer, final TV trailer. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what I remember of it. And basically my recollection is there's just going to be a lot of, a lot of fighting, which I think is always good. Uh, uh, from what I've heard, there's supposed to be a 45 minute fight sequence. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome if it was just all one track? It's like, let's not even have cutscenes. Let's just do this all in one take. <laughs> just a 45 minute, one long cut. <laughs> oh, that would be really awkward to do considering how much CG is in that fight. <laughs> <laughs> our our whole budget basically went you to this. You just randomly see a tennis ball fly in the face <laughs> of Orlando Bloom. <laughs> 40, 45. Randomly see that happen. Oh, jeez. Yeah, um, I don't know, Mike, should we... We could jump into, like, defining one of the cool things about what a movie draft is and how this relates to this movie. That's right. So, basically, I, uh, I did this... Um, I call it, uh, it was like a PDF doc, but it's basically a grade sheet for anybody who plays, uh, final fan or not final fantasy, <laughs> anybody that plays fantasy football or fantasy hockey or fantasy baseball, they would kind of already know what, what this kind of is. Yahoo and ESPN right now are like the two leading, um, fantasy hub places for people that want to do their own drafts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, one of the cool things that Yahoo does, which I thought was interesting, is they'll do a grade sheet on on the draft picks that people do. So I basically, um, Cord Killers does a movie draft, and they had done theirs last week. So I basically just did a, a grade sheet for them. And I, I think the person that I had... 
Uh, explain a little bit. I, I think you should explain a little bit what a movie draft is generally uh, for those that maybe don't listen to card killers, maybe haven't yeah. participated. Like, well, how how does one draft movies? What is the criteria? Uh, I know you and I have listened to this and, and the results of this for several years now. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, you know, what what the you know what, what, what's the general concept here? So I will be doing a video on like a, an illustrated vi- video on this eventually, but um, basically basic simple it you just get a group of your friends together and they break it down the way uh court killers broke it down was basically two seasons a summer uh draft and a winter draft so you take all of the movies all of the major blockbuster movies that will be coming out that year and you start off with you know a hundred virtual dollars and you're basically just trying to buy outbid the movie from in your league, the amongst your your peers or friends, you're just trying to outbid on that movie. And what you're trying to outbid is you're trying to grab movies that you think will bring in the highest grossing revenue. Right. Uh, but th- yeah, that's basically it. Um, and you uh, sent in an email basically grading everybody's picks on the cord killers uh, uh the cord killers draft yeah yeah uh, and you sent them a pdf document did you share the pdf document like they requested no i haven't shared it yet uh work was kind of crazy today mm-hmm. i will be sharing it and uh, eventually i'd like to do some other stuff with it to kind of open it up um and if you're on video here's their video showing the uh document so- yeah i mean it wasn't it wasn't anything complex but i i do know like basing back on the hobbit i mean you're looking at the do you have the document up um, I have their video showing the document. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. I think it was um, Brian who had The Hobbit. Mm-hmm. And I told him that based on his his group of picks, like uh, it was it was most likely that he could be a surprise win. Because you're saying like every Hobbit movie. Did, did, you, did you mean every Hobbit movie gets better? Yeah. Every, or every Lord of the Rings movie gets a better. So every Hobbit movie has made more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, hands down, opening weekend than the Lord of the Rings movies. Oh, really? Yeah, and then it's every so weird because I don't feel like there's been as much of a, a fever pitch over these movies. Um, yeah, IMAX, IMAX and 3D. Is that it? That's c- quite that, possible. That's yet. exactly it because there there was no 3D Lord of the Rings movie. That's mm-hmm. true. That's true. So that so that, so what that that means automatically there's more money coming in. Yeah, even if it's but, the same people. Yeah, but on the flip side of that, um. If you look at it, yeah, up front, the Hobbit movies were making more money. And incrementally, like the first one, obviously the second one made more money than the first one. So on that projection scale, you could say that the third one, by you know track record, would be on route to make more money than its predecessors. But overall, The Lord of the Rings still made more money than all of the Hobbits. Mm-hmm. But I was still basically... But, but also, I said, we don't have the third Hobbit out yet. Yeah, yeah. So. so basically I was saying, this is the final This is the final movie. We have five armies. We have a dragon. It's gonna have a lot of action in it. I can't see this. This could be the movie that could definitely help jump him to first place. Okay. Compared to somebody else who uh, spent 30... Or, Tom Merritt spent eighty two dollars on one movie. Uh the uh, I can't why am I spacing out on the movie? The, oh, Arrow. the 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 Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Yeah. And uh oh, okay. that's uh, that's seen now I have a question about this because I've never done a movie draft before. Yeah. Is it just based on opening weekend or is it based on subsequent it's the run. Closing. Yeah, it's the run. Um, yeah. and some okay. dra- like the the league that I was in, we locked it down after four weeks, so we gave every movie a month. I don't know how long. That way, you don't have like a Gardens of the Galaxy that keeps sucking yeah. dry everybody else. Yeah, and there there are other rules that like I I want to actually put a rule book together and like release it, but there are other rules that in fact there's people can add to like make the games more challenging. Like a, a simple one would be. Um, so, like a movie like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy can't go crazy, you would just factor in the average Rotten Tomato score, and then whatever the gross is, they only get the average of that. Hmm. But okay. it's I don't know, it's really fun. I mean, of course, I like coming at it with the statistics of it, saying like, all right, what's you know based on what's happened before, what are the projected you know revenue stream, and what movies are the best pick. And it was funny because I think the person I gave a D minus picked up nine movies 
and his highest grossing movie or projected movie was uh uh I don't even uh Madag- Madagascar or something Madagascar no no or no Madagascar no it was uh, it starts with an M I don't remember it but it was uh it's the Johnny Depp movie okay uh where Johnny Depp's basically just being really weird. So any Johnny Depp yeah. movie? Okay. So any Johnny Depp movie. <laughs> yeah, All right. Yeah. The I think it's Matador. Something like that. But I, I just laughed because I was like, if you look at Johnny I'm Depp's past that. five movies, his highest grossing one, he played a cameo in it, and he was only on screen for all of like three minutes and he dies. So it's kind of funny when you like that that was a weak draft pick. But that's the draft. So yeah, but moving on. Because we have very limited time. Box office this weekend, I thought was very interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard about it. So I'm not surprised. No, yeah, yeah, you got to be. Yeah, there was a lot. Uh, I mean, and I understand like Interstellar turns into a movie that you didn't expect or has a lot of surprises in it. So I, I'm not surprised that people just just glommed on to Big Hero 6. Yeah, well, I saw both of them. And based on... Yeah, based on them, I would say that Interstellar was more entertaining, but Big Hero Six was good. Now they 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 weighed in at uh, fifty six million for Big Hero Six mm-hmm. and forty seven million for Interstellar, which is not bad. Not a not a giant, you know, a uh, uh, gap there. It's funny the numbers for Interstellar have been fluctuating. At one point, I heard they were up to fifty one. Mm-hmm. They might have just been projected. At another point, they're at forty nine. You're saying that. Right now they're at forty seven. That was the weekend box office. That was what was on box office mojo. Yeah, that's what so. your link. That's what your link is saying. Yeah, yeah. But you're saying that's fluctuating. Well, I mean, it could just because it was the weekend. Yeah. So now Maybe the because the future, man. Yeah. But Gotta save the earth. We don't know what money means. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. It definitely shows that the family, the family movies, took it. That's what people wanted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Big Hero Six is only going to get more and more money. Yeah, as you yeah. get closer to Thanksgiving, closer I to think Christmas. there's going to be a long tail, and I'm not going to see it until this weekend myself, mm-hmm. uh, because of reasons over the weekend. Um, Sorg, so what? Post credits. Post credits. Oh, because it's a Marvel movie. It, yep. It's anything. It's a Marvel movie, and I, and I understand. It sounds like there's a lot of nods to Marvel stuff in this too. Uh, not as much as I was expecting. Yeah. Not, like maybe little things. So. I mean, you have your your basic cameo, which I thought they did a pretty uh, good job with. Okay. Yeah, don't spoil that. Yeah, I'm don't not spoil that at all. Um, but um, yeah, I I thought there were gonna be more references. But I wonder, like, I'm not familiar with the Big Hero Six comic. No, I wasn't either. More specific references based on that. And I also wonder how much of this is um, how how much based on the comic is it, or how much did they just kind of Disney eyes it, you know? But not that I think it's a bad thing, you know. Uh, it, it felt like it feels like I'm gonna like this, like I liked Record Ralph. I mean, I thought Record Ralph was was better. Okay, but that's not saying much. It's, the it's jokes, a different kind of movie. Yeah, the jokes that were done in this movie were, I mean, they were slow, but they were funny, and the action was interesting. I'm. Mean, there were a lot of twists too that like people people had lots of speculation of what they thought uh, the villain was. I mean, overall, I think it was a good movie in the sense that there were twists, there was humor, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Let's get into some stories. Let's get into some stories. Um, and Mike, can you read this? Because I have not read any of this. Okay. Uh, well, the first story we have is Matt Damon is confirming that he is going to start shooting the next Bourne movie next year, which I find is odd because Jeremy Renner was in the last one, and I guess he's not coming back to that. Hmm. Was Matt Damon in the last one? He was in the first three Bourne movies. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think he was in the last it, one. It sounded like the... they were they were kind of moving it to to be the the other guy. Hmm. Huh. So, okay, that's I mean, what it was. I mean, unless they're setting up like a born versus born or something, or that could be. That uh, this thing's just getting muddy. And we're going to announce uh, four, four or five year, two born movies a year <laughs> yeah. um, plan <laughs> for the born universe. They'll be intersecting with I don't know more born movies. I mean, 
This feels like they they gave him a script and said, "Look, we're just going to give you a lot of money attached." It's to a script. born franchise. There's a lot of money. Let's mm-hmm. let's just. It's like, hey, Matt Damon. Uh, we know this works. Let's do it again. That's that's fine. I um, think the funny thing about all of these born movies are the way they end. They could literally, like, yes, they could close it off I can't right tell there. Any of them apart. I really just can't tell any of them they apart. They do start to all blur together. They do, but it's just, I don't know. And maybe that's why they, they put a new one out, and then you forget which one it is, so you rewatch them all the time, and I don't know. But, um, I, Mike, I, I know we had this new story uh, a little bit in the group, but you, you found a little bit more about the Suicide Squad than even I was looking at. Uh, yeah, so I, the, the story that I pulled up is that, uh, DC is looking to target Jared Leto as the Joker that, hello, the Joker is going to be in, uh, Suicide Squad. Wow. Which is great. <laughs> um, is but, he, uh, is he one of the original members of the Suicide Squad? No, 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 Joker, no, no. Joker has nothing to do with the Suicide Squad. I didn't Squad. think so. So he's, is he playing a villain? Well, uh, that's an interesting question because, I mean, the, the Joker being in the movie automatically insinuates that Harley Quinn is going to be in the movie, which uh, they have. There's a rumor that it's going to be Margot Robbie from uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, I'd heard and, that. And I'm okay with that. I'm fine. I need to hear <laughs> how she does the voice, but she certainly has the look down, so you can't really fault that. Uh, but yeah, it also looks like that they're trying to target some big high profile talent like Ryan Gosling, Tom Hardy, and Will Smith. Wow. Yeah, I saw Will Smith's name attached to this and I was not really sure. They can bring in Deadshot, they can bring in any number of DC villains for a suicide squad. Yeah. Certainly. It, it, it's a wide open concept. Yeah, there, there's the original crew, but it's just swapped out so many times. You can literally put any. You're right. Cool. You'll put any of them in there. I mean, even if you go with the crew that uh, Mar- the DC did the Assault on Arkham game, uh, the mo- the animated film, uh, less uh, less than six months ago, even if you go with that crew, you have like Killer Frost, you have Captain Boomerang, you have Deadshot. Uh, that was a fine cast too. You can do that, and you know, then it's already familiar with some people in their brain. They had the Suicide Squad and Arrow, which I know the movies don't interact with the tv shows but at least you can take some of the people from that iteration of the suicide squad and have them be in the movie but i'm just intrigued like suicide squad is actually the only dc movie i'm excited for because i don't think it's gonna be in continuity so and 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 they it it seems like there's no it's one of those there's no expectation just like we had no expectation of guardians of the galaxy yeah that's the one where i think dc because i think the Vertigo movies have been very well done. Yes. I think Watchmen has been very well done. And everything else has dropped the ball that should be easy. Yeah. No, I, I'll agree with that. It's almost weird because, like, yeah, you see V for Vendetta and you're like, mm-hmm. oh. Or you see, uh, or like, even like the worst is probably Constantine, you know, and I enjoy Constantine. And I, I loved Constantine. I, yeah. And, and now, look what they're doing with the series, you know? Um. Uh. uh what, oh, what was the other? One? Not Runaways. Um. Oh, oh what is the one? It, it was just like a bunch of crooks, if I recall. The uh, I'll, I'll I'll look it up here off off offhand. Um, the my, one with Chris Evans in it. I think so. I think so. Uh, I'll, I'll get on that in a moment. Um, but uh, big Star Wars news, right, Mike? Uh, yeah. It depends on what your opinion is, but. Star Wars Episode Seven now has officially entered the subtitle ranks, and it's going to be called Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Nice. I I just figure I put that in there so we can speculate on what that might mean. <laughs> and thank you. I think it means it's awake now. People are gonna wake like, up. Um, like the opening scene is just Vader sitting up, like hitting an alarm clock. Oh, it's too hot. Too early, Dad. I don't want to destroy Alderaan again. <laughs> um, the, the <coughs> excuse me. The interesting thing came out of this. There's apparently a Star Wars title generator out there. You can go type in, and, uh, <laughs> and it'll just like drop the font in, just like it is in that story. Uh, it, it, and Dork, you were thinking of the losers. The losers. Thank you. The losers was in our Vertigo one. That was I thought very very well done. Huh. So, 
Awesome. What year was that? Uh, probably like five years ago. The Losers was in 2010. Huh. Like five years ago. We have to look that up. <laughs> Ish. Yeah, I... I was, uh, I think it was either on another podcast or I read it somewhere where, like, at this point, Star Wars titles, it it's kind of just like, what else are you going to do? Like, they are what they are. Isn't Red a DC property, too? Red? I, I don't it was think Marvel. so. It's a comic. I know that. It's not Marvel. I don't, I don't think it's Marvel at all. Kick Ass was another one, but that was a Marvel spinoff one, too. So, I mean, I again, Red but was. again, these are all movies that we have no expectations. Because we, most of us have not read the comic book. I don't know. I, I have an expectation for Suicide Squad. Yeah, but Scott Pilgrim was because Harley Quinn. If they are doing Harley Quinn, it's going to be the first live action iteration of Harley Quinn. You're right there. Harley Quinn, Joker. There's an expectation. You just brought them into that realm that ruins Man of Steel for a lot of people. Because especially if, especially if it's not in continuity, because they haven't said like when DC released their whole slate of movies, they never said what's in continuity. They just said, "Here's all the shit we're doing." So it should be interesting. Not that DC has really really done continuity at all. Oh, um, you're right. Red. Also, also a Vertigo movie, History of Violence, which I don't think I've seen that one. Red is a DC is uh, movie. That's funny. It seems like all of their realistic heroes. Uh, turn out to have good movies, and then all of their crazy Superman type heroes have really bad movies. Yeah, I, it, it's that expectation. I think that's it. I, well, I, the problem is you can't you can't please the majority to have this ideal. And Zack Snyder wants to do his version of Spider Man. Nolan wants to do his version of Bat. Wait, Snyder wants to do his version of Superman. I said Spider Man, didn't I? <laughs> uh, okay. I? I would not want to see Zack Snyder's version of Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine Zack Snyder's <laughs> Spider Man? It would be. Aunt May would be eviscerated by the rhino. Like, like you would see the rhino fighting Spider Man with Aunt May impaled on his horn. Oh, I'm wow. loving it. <laughs> oh, wow. For some reason, like, Spider Man will just lose his shirt and be, like, super muscular, even though he's a teenage kid. Of course. Well, he's whitey. Yes, exactly. Anyways, (laughs) let's move on in there. What you guys watch this week? Uh, Obviously, Big Hero 6 we already talked about. Yep. Interstellar. I watched that. So how was Interstellar? Like It's like kind of a three-ish hour epic movie, right? Oh my gosh, it's It's a Christopher Nolan flick, so it's going to be like ridiculous. Um, I don't know. Cutting it, it's good. I'll leave it at that. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I I need to know if I actually want to see this movie or not because oh. right now I'm not sold on it. It just looks like gravity with actually landing somewhere. I don't know. I don't know that if you doesn't intrigue me. I don't know if you got. I don't know if you got that on the microphone, but it, apparently the Hey Siri uh, kicked in and and it caught Malingo's. It's good, and she responded, "Yes, it is." See, even Siri knows. Even Siri knows what's going on. Um, I don't know. I like gravity, right? Uh, gravity is better than this. I think. So, okay. oh, geez. with that, really, really, yeah. I enjoy, yeah, I, I enjoy gravity. I think gravity I is, certainly enjoyed it. Gravity is more, well, uh, the thing is, gravity is more believable than the fact that you could see yourself in that position. Lango, I go back um, to, I don't go to movies for believability. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I could see myself as an astronaut trapped in space. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> you don't think you could see? I could see myself part. more in Big Hero Six than I can in Interstellar. <laughs> that's more. That's more my style. I'm the. I'm a Big Hero Six oh, kind of kid. Man. I don't. Know. Interstellar is. I'm just gonna say it's good. It's interesting. There are some things that annoyed me, and it is a three hour long movie. So don't. Is one of those things that annoyed you Matthew McConaughey being a scientist? No, I actually I was okay with that. I was, because, I was disappointed that they didn't um, mention him driving a Lincoln, but <laughs> was yeah. he driving a Lincoln in the movie? The spaceship the was spaceship a Lincoln. He drives, he drives, drives a Lincoln into space and tries to to, to save the planet because we can't because like, we have a shortage of Lincolns. When when he left when he left the atmosphere of the Earth, did he go? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> he started thumping his chest. <laughs> Oh, you gotta love him. Um, it oh, just in by res- the way, fu- funny quick side note about the thumping and chest thing from Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, I was listening to a director commentary. Apparently, McConaughey improv that. I could totally see that. And, and the that look that Leo awesome. gives while they're in the restaurant, 
he's he's looking over at Scorsese like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> And of course, that's the most memorable part, memorable part of that movie. Oh, uh, um, yeah. What else did I watch? I did rewatch uh, Pursuit of Happiness. I don't know why. It was just kind of one of those movies that I was like, oh, I'll watch this now. Um, and I finished season two of Homeland. And I don't know why I stopped watching that show. It is freaking why good. Why aren't you watching season two of, of We gave you an assignment. Season two of what? Um, Arrow. Arrow. I, yeah. hey, Malanga, uh, hey, Chachi just finished the entirety of Agents of Shield so far, which yeah. is great because he he went on the entire emotional co- uh, roller coaster on chat with me over like a week that I've gone <laughs> over the last year and a half. Um, you know, you know, things being yelled, spoilers. Uh, there can be no fits without Simmons. Um, you know, sword, sword. Um. Don't make my heart hurt right now. He was really right? mad when they killed off Patton Oswald, Oswald, and I told him you won't be. Huh. <laughs> Don't worry, it's well, okay. And, well, and well, now he has moved on to Arrow. I think yeah. I'm about six episodes away from finishing season two of Arrow, and then I will jump back onto Shield. I have till May before I have to finish or get caught up with Shield, so I got like a crap load of time. I'm not in any rush with that. Homeland's good, though, if you haven't seen that. But anyway, that's me. What about you, Mad Mike? Well, uh, the main thing I saw this week was Big Hero 6. Mm-hmm. and I mean, we talked about it a little bit before. Uh, I enjoyed it a hell of a lot. Uh, I thought the voice acting was really, really good. Uh, the voice acting made me believe all the characters, even though a lot of the Meyer characters on the team didn't get much depth. Uh, it was, they were still fun characters. They were fun uh like cutouts of characters and the villain reveal was good. The graphic, the animation was just stunning. I mean, yeah. I saw it in 3d. Oh uh, yeah, I, I did too. That's funny. In 3d. It, it looked, it was great. Um, the guy playing Bay, Baymax, I forget his name, but, uh, he was, uh, really, really good. Like <laughs> just, for something that when I saw the first trailer, I was like, oh, this just looks like Strong Sad, but with superpowers. Uh, Scott Adsit from, uh, I believe he's from Parks and Rec. He is really, really, really good as Baymax. Oh, he's from 30 Rock, excuse me. Uh, but he brought such a love life that do- like visually doesn't look like much. It looks like a white blob of vinyl with a with with the eyes and a smile. But there's so much brought to Baymax, it was really, really well done. I I highly recommend it. I may even go see it again. I'm not positive, but I might. Yeah, I mean just quick perspective between those two movies. Big Hero Six was at like a ninety two percent on Rotten Tomato. Interstellar was somewhere around like a seventy eight. Interstellar dropped in rating and Big Hero Six went up. So Yes, I would recommend that. Uh, what about you, Mike? Sorry. Um, the biggest thing is I watched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure through my eyelids earlier today. Um, and I uh, uh, finished off Californication. I had a lot of traveling this weekend with a lot of wrestling shows, so I didn't really get to a whole lot. Oh, and the fa- I did squeeze in the finale of Doctor Who. Um, oh man all the feels from that oh so many emotions yeah so many emotions wasn't that great he's so lonely well because it's sad oh first of all hmm. so no yeah you're not gonna feel good after this one i'm gonna tell you that right now are we getting a new doctor already no no <laughs> no be- technically i don't even know if he can regenerate um, I thought he was given a whole new round of it when Ooh, I thought he was just giving some regeneration. Up. No, I thought I think he was given the whole new. No, because I, I thought I thought he was given the rest of uh, such and such's, and then the reveal of such of of so and so being on there. <laughs> um, that was supposed to be dead the whole time. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. oh crap. <laughs> now I have to watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah, when they when they all right. You know what, Malengo, you catch up on Arrow. Well, you you, you didn't watch Doctor you Who. didn't watch part part one, right? Like last week. No, I am all the way back on episode two. Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Damn. So, and not yeah. the great. It's not as epic of a no. Honestly, I'd skip ahead to the finale. Really? No, <laughs> no, no. I. What What else do you need? Well, the nicest part is uh, other than the growing distrust. Of 
the companion to the doctor. Like mm. there's kind of a roller coaster of that happening. Like that's it's it's all about like her relationship with him and this new guy, and dealing with that. And then it turns into something else, and and that wraps up. Yeah, so I think it's a good send off. I'm all about binge watching anyway. Yeah, that's why I haven't oh, yeah. finished. Uh, all right, whatever. And so on that note, on that note, um, I, I think we could we could call it a wrap. Yeah. So uh, I don't think we have anything to plug. Right. Podcamp Pittsburgh is next week. PodcampPittsburgh.com, November 22nd, 23rd at Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh. Find out more information at PodcampPittsburgh.com. Yep. And with that, have a uh, awesome rambling movie minute time. I don't know. I'm totally lost. <laughs> My thing went off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Yes, that sounds good. All right. See you. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.